Hello, am I audible at the end? All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Agastya. I am doing my PhD at UCL, and I'll be talking about something which is rapid, precise, reproducible binding affinity. It sounds complex, but it's not that complex. Really. So, since last two days, we have been hearing a lot about uh, the advantages of performing an ensemble simulation over a single simulation. So I'll also be conveying quite similar message, but for a different field, which is binding affinity calculations. Okay, I'll just read this way. Page down. Which one? I'm just going to next slide. Um, Does it work with the arrows? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's working now. Oh, maybe I didn't. Yeah, you will just have to pause for me to think. Okay, that's fine. All right. So everyone might be familiar with this graph here, which is simply just defining what a binding affinity is. Which is uh, if you have a protein and a ligand, they're both in free states. We get the sum of the binding affinity of them in free states and then uh, the, bio, the free energy in bound state. And the difference of these two terms is actually the binding affinity. And the more negative the binding affinity is, the stronger the drug protein complex is, or the stronger the binding is. That's the key idea. I don't have to talk about too much about this. Okay. So uh, in this talk, I'll be just talking about one method, which is uh, MMPBS, MMGBS method. Um, and uh, this, is, this gives the enthalpy part, and then the entropy part is calculated using the normal mode. Uh, approximation. So the idea is that we calculate the uh, free energy for the whole complex and for the protein only, the free protein and the free ligand, and take the, take the difference to get the binding affinity. And each free energy term here is being calculated using the MMPBSA, and the entropy term is calculated using the normal mode approximation, and then we take the difference of them to get the final binding, uh, free energy. So that's the, whenever I refer to binding affinity, I'll just talk, I'm talking about MPBS technique. Okay, so as I said, single simulations are not reproducible. So these are a few results which, uh, which have been published by our group uh, a while ago. So these are two different complexes, one is the EGFR here, and uh, one is the HIV protease. So these are all drug protein, uh, drug ligand complex, drug protein complexes. And uh, the graph here, you can see y-axis is the normalized frequency distribution of uh, binding affinity calculated using several replicas, as we call the ensemble of replicas, ensemble of simulations. So what we do is we perform several simulations using same initial coordinates, exactly same initial condition, all the con everything is same, and we just redo it and calculate the uh, binding affinity for each simulation. And then we get a frequency distribution for those ensemble of free, uh, free energies, and we can see that there is a distribution, uh, a Gaussian distribution of free energy cells that are using uh, the ensemble of uh, simulations. Which This means that if you perform a single simulation, and then you perform another simulation of the same system using uh, same initial condition, you can get, uh, for in the first instance, you get a point here, and the second instance, you can be as far apart as this. So the single simulations are not reproducible. And since it's not reproducible, it's unscientific. But if you perform an ensemble of simulation, then you can get a Gaussian distribution, and then that is reproducible. So every time you perform an ensemble, you get a uh, same distribution, and uh, the, uh, the mean of that distribution would be the same place. The, the different way of saying the same thing would be that let's say if I have eight drugs and a protein, and I need to find the ranking of the binding affinity of these drugs with a protein. And if I perform a single simulation, single energy simulation, and get the binding affinity, then let's say in the first instance I get something like this. So x actually is the experimental binding affinity, and the y is the theoretical estimate. And now if I perform one more simulation for each of them and plot the same graph again, then I might end up getting something like this. So this conveys the point that single simulations are not reproducible. But if I plot a similar graph using an ensemble of simulation, get an ensemble of free energies and get the average of that and with the error bar, then this is what I can get. So if I perform, I have eight drugs, I perform an ensemble for each of the drugs, and then using the ensemble, I get the final binding affinity. This is what I can get. And if I perform this ensemble once again for the whole set, I will again get this point, which is in this region, which is which is uh, in the same region again. 
So basically, it is reproducible. So that's the idea of reproducibility when you perform the ensemble uh, simulations. Now, this is a complex protocol which we follow, as I mentioned, the MPBSA technique. So first of all, you prepare the model, which is a very traditional, uh, trivial thing. We prepare the model, we perform the equilibration, and then we perform the simulations. And we have an ensemble of size P, let's say. I'll, I'll talk about what size P is. We get, an, uh, we get P trajectories. Now, we need to calculate, uh, take the snap, snapshots from the trajectories, get the quadratic confirmations, and then perform MPBS and NMO calculation at each confirmation. And we get a large amount of data, and then we just perform some statistical analysis. We get the final number, which is the binding affinity, which is, as, as I said, reproducible. So that's the whole protocol. Now, looking at this protocol, there are two questions which someone will ask. First, what's the size of ensemble? You can perform 100 simulations. You can perform 1,000 simulations. What's, what's the optimum size you will need? And also, how long each replica, as we call replica simulation, how long, what's the length of each replica simulation should be? What's the optimum thing? So to answer these questions, we perform a simulation of ensembles of size 50, we thought is good enough. And then we got some results, which I'll show you in the next slide which is this. So the, the, the graph on the left is for MMPBSA and the graph on the right is for the uh, N mode. And on the y-axis, you can see the uh, bootstrap error. So basically, these plots show the variation of bootstrap error with the replica length going from 1 to 10 nanoseconds. And uh, same thing for uh, N mode. And we can we found, looking at this graph, we found that 4 nanosecond is something which is pretty much converged. So the error is in the range of 0.3 which is quite okay. And if we go beyond that, it doesn't really help us a lot. So, and this is for one of the systems. We, whenever we perform a new system, we've worked on a lot of systems, and every time we get a similar similar pattern. So basically, 4 nanosecond is something which we found is optimum length of simulation of each replica. Now, to get, the, uh, to get an estimate of what's the best size or the size of ensemble we should work on, we thought it's a similar thing, variation of uh, the bootstrap error, with number of replicas. We performed up to 50 replicas, and then we plotted the variation of this error with number of replicas. And we found that uh, after 25, although the error goes down, but it's not substantially changing. So basically, it's a trade-off. You need to really decide that how much computational expense, uh, computational uh, resources you need to expend uh, for getting the error. So basically, 25, is the, uh, 25 replica is something which we found is good enough. So that's after these analysis, after these results, this is the final version of our uh, protocol, which we call as ASMAX is. So ASMAX is Enhanced Sampling Molecular Dynamics with Approximation of Continuum Solvent, as we call it. Um, this technique uses, uh, so this is the protocol as, uh, as I've talked about so far. Uh, we run 25 replica simulations, four nanoseconds each, and uh, each simulation is varying only in the set of initial velocities which are assigned to the atoms, and rest all the conditions are same, and each uh, length of each is four nanoseconds. And then once we get the simulation, we take the snapshot for each, uh, each trajectory and take the confirmations and perform MPBS and n mode calculation on each snapshot or each confirmation. And we get a huge amount of data. And then we perform uh, statistical analysis to get the final binding affinity, which with the contract error bar. And as people have been talking about since yesterday, the sing it's much better efficient sampling than the single long simulation. And also, it allows us to get reproducible results, as I explained a while ago. So that's the ASMAC protocol which we have uh, been working on. Now, to perform this whole in data intensive workflow, it's uh, doing it manually would be a tedious task. So you really need automation. So automation was really needed, and uh, that's the reason we have developed something called Binding Affinity Calculator, or BAC. Uh, it's a software toolkit which performs this whole protocol automatically. So essentially, we are just running a few single line commands. And we get, uh, so we prepare the model, and then the next step is to equilibration production, submission of jobs on remote machine. Once everything is done, just copy back the data. There are some bunch of scripts which we run to get the statistical analysis. And after doing all this, we get a single number, which is a reproducible binding affinity, which is con with a contracted error bar. And all, all of this is really automated, just a few bunch of, uh, bunch of commands on command line, and we can just do everything. Now, uh, of course, uh, this accuracy which we are talking about, or the precision which we are talking about, doesn't it, it needs a cost. It, it comes with a cost. So this is really uh, expensive calculation because if you perform a single MPBS calculation, it's really, I mean, very very cheap as compared to some other techniques. 
But if you perform as max calculation, which is an enhanced version of uh, finding, uh, calculating binding affinity using uh, MMPBSA, it is really uh, computer intensive. You so so this is a for one of the systems we are working on. This data has been taken from. It requires about 3,500 cores for six hours, which is about 21,000 core hours. And uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's that's the amount of time we require for just one uh, complex. By, by complex, I mean drug protein uh, complex. So and of course we need an HPC resource. We have not really worked on GPU so far, but uh, we have been working on large supercomputers. We need large uh, supercomputer for that. And another feature of this uh, workflow is that it is scalable. So if you have a large computer, let's say if you have a computer of a million cores, then you can simply submit the job in parallel. You can run, so if, if it requires 3,500 cores for one complex and you have a million core, you can actually submit job for like 200, 250 uh, drugs in one at, at the same time. And it's, it takes about six hours and in one day you can actually perform, you can calculate the binding affinity from as much protocol for about 1,000 drug protein complexes. So that's just a scalability of this protocol, which makes it very effective. And within a very short workflow of time, you can actually get a uh, very precise uh, binding affinity, which has a lot of potential application, which I'll talk about in the later slides. OK, so this slide is to emphasize uh, about, to give the emphasis of uh, personalized medicine, which is a hot topic at the moment. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm mentioning, I'm, I'm putting it here because um, the back, the ASMAX workflow, which we have developed, has a potential application in this field. So this here it says that a um, lot of drugs have are ineffective on a large proportion of uh, patients, patient population. So the reason is uh, as the famous problem of uh, drug resistance. So the drugs, the the the, the target proteins get resistant to drugs and then they are no more effective. So that's the reason. Uh, say a, a drug can work on one person but not other. So this, this uh, makes us think to, towards the personalized medicine or tailoring the, uh, the medication for uh, specific to a person's DNA sequence. So that's the idea of personalized medicine. Now how does this, how does ASMAX fit into this picture? So this is one of the complexes uh, we have worked on, this is HIV-1 protease. So this is, uh, um, it's, it is important in the cell cycle of HIV. Um, now there are some FDA, there are nine FDA approved uh, protease inhibitors which inhibit this protease and, and hence stop the HIV and they have been developed. But again, the problem of uh, microbial resistance shows up here and out of this, I mean, all these, uh, this HIV protease has a lot of mutations which are resistance to most of the drugs. So there are some mutants which are like every mutant has, has developed a resistance against drugs. So each drug is not effective on all of the mutants. There are only few mutants on which one drug can work, but it may, might not work some, on some other mutants. So now if we have, let's say, a list of mutants, and if we can, using our SMAX protocol, get a ranking of the binding affinities, based on the binding affinities, if we rank the drugs uh, based on their efficiency, on which if they are effective on the mutant or not, then we can actually uh, guess that for a particular person, which drug is effective or which is not. And using that database, we can actually tailor that person's medication or we can use, uh, we can basically, using the, that database, we can go towards the personalized medicine. So, so this, 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 this uh, graph shows the results of uh, the theoretical estimates of binding of MIPI using our ASMAX protocol on the y-axis. And on the x-axis, we have got experimental results experimental binding affinities. And as you can see here, we've got very good correlation uh, with, with the experimental results, which proves that the ASMA protocol actually gives very good results and which are reproducible. If you want to perform this simulation in, on your system, on your thing, if you just follow our protocol, you get similar graph, similar correlation. So that's the idea. So this gives, this uh, is giving the, this shows us that ASMAC protocol actually has a potential application in the field of personalized medicine. This has been published in one of the, uh, if, you are, if you are interested, it's published a while ago. 
So there are few other systems which we have been working on. This one is one of them is EGFR direction kinase domain, which is published already. And the other one is VCR ABL kinase mutants, which is not yet published, but we are getting caught similar results using their SNAP protocol. Now, searching for uh, you know the this lead optimization as we call I'm not sure about the terminology of pharmaceutical companies, but basically if you have a million of compounds, then you should really narrow down your choices of potential drug candidates. That's something like searching for needles in a haystack. It's, it's, it's really a tedious process. And that's the reason uh, virtual screening comes into play. The people use computer models, they use the computational predictions to, to get the, to narrow down, down their choices out of millions of compounds and then they can work on them on the filtered set of compounds. Uh, so, of course, but the problem is that if the binding affinities which you predict using computational techniques is not reproducible, then no one would really you know, rely on that method because it's not reproducible. The next time you produce it, it's giving a different result. How can you rely on that? But if the, the computational results which we get using our binding affinity are reliable, are reproducible, then someone might think of, okay, maybe I, I can use this technique. I, I can rely on that. I can at least screen out you know, filter out the possibility which are definitely not in the range of potential candidates, drug candidates. So that's where the application of uh, the reproducibility becomes very important, and that's where the application of ASMAX comes into play in the field of uh, virtual screening. Yeah, so this is a small topic uh, which is, which I'll cover apart from my talk. It's called FAPSIM, which is a software again, which has been primarily developed to automate the, the frequently used uh, pattern or frequently done things. So basically, in, in the, in the uh, realm of ESMAX, we just use it for submitting the jobs on remote machines. So FabSim has been, it's a Python-based software, which has the several applications I'll show you in the, in the next slide, that what all that you know, field has, it has been applied on. One of them is ESMAX, or Binding Ethnic Calculation. Uh, so we, since we need to submit the ensemble of jobs on remote machines, if you do that manually, you, you need to copy everything and then you make copies, you submit them, do, you might, it, it might be an electronic process, but FabSim has been developed such a way that you can just write a one line command on your local machine, give it the path of the input model builds, and it will just automatically submit on the desired machine. You can mention that in the command line, and you can mention the, um, all the parameters you want, like number of cores and how many replicas you want to run and all the stuff. And it's just in one command line, you press the button and it just submits everything on the remote machine. And when it's done, you just write another command and you get copies the data back. It makes life much easier. So that's, and, and an important thing about FabSim is that it is not an end user thing. It's more like a developer thing. So it is highly customizable. So if you want to really modify it, adapt it according to your own code, you can just open the FabSim. I'll show you some templates of FabSim script. You can just go write your own function and say, okay, now I don't, I want to do, do things in a certain different way. Okay, you just write it on your own and make it work. So it's highly customizable and it's very useful in terms of uh, as max calculation, to automate things very nicely. And that's uh, a diagram which shows how FabSim works. It's more very technical. I won't go into details of this. Uh, so FabSim has been um, used in different areas. One of them is FabBioMD, as I just talked about. And this is also used in nanomaterials uh, simulations and some simulations in that case as well. And EMLB is another software which is, which is a part of FabSim. So, and this is an example function. So this is for submission of NAMD job on some remote machine. You can actually set the defaults here. And you can, it's basically Python based. If you know Python, you can write anything here and it will get, get executed. So it's one of the functions for NAMD submission. And you can also define the machine definitions here. So, this is, so you have a machine template file where you can just set up your, this is, these are the uh, defaults for BlueJewel. You can set up, write the name of your own machine, set up the defaults here, and then it will just pick up the variables from here, put it in your submission script, submit everything, everything is done. And for, uh, this is an example of LAMP's submission script and the batch header for Archer. And we'll be, We'll be very soon publishing a paper on FabSim. It will, and I have a copy of the manuscript. If anyone is interested, we can have a chat 
and I can show you the manuscript and it will be soon out very soon. I'd like to thank uh, my, my supervisor, Professor Kogane and my colleagues and UCL and Inlux for funding me. And thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are two different things. One is uh, which method you use. Uh, so you are talking about the methods, so MMPBSA or FEP or thermodynamic integration or LIE, whatever. And the second thing is performing a single simulation or ensemble simulation. So these are two different things. You should not mix that up. Of course, FEP is a better result. But if you perform a single simulation FEP, and I mean it's not comparable. Of course, I mean GBSA is not a good technique. But if you perform ensemble uh, ensemble MMPBSA or ASMAX, then it will do it will enhance the sampling, which is the problem in MMPBSA. You can also perform a, an ensemble of thermodynamic integration or FEP, and that will give you much better results than a single simulation FEP results. But in any case, the FEP and MMPBSA will be equal on time to the one pre energy perturbation, I think. I well, I can't really what? comment on that, but uh, I don't think it's directly comparable that way. Uh, of course, FEP is more accurate. MMPBSA is not accurate in that sense. So it's a question well, I can't answer that actually, but uh, definitely it's it's more that if you perform a 50 FEP and 50 MMPB essay, then up to, of course 50 FEP is much better. But if you perform one FEP and 50 MMPB essay, I really don't know. Maybe I have to just do it and find <laughs> out. <laughs> I don't have a result for that. But yeah, you can definitely perform an ensemble FEP and then it will be much better. The idea of getting enhanced sampling because a single simulation can't can't uh, really go through all the confirmations. It doesn't, you know, does uh, enough sampling. That's the problem. So why? Uh, I just want to know: is the is the backs calculator code somewhere? Um, so we have a publication, um, but the code is going to be up very soon. Okay. Yeah. So it's not yet up. We we are developing a user-friendly back, UF back as we call it. So we'll publish a paper very soon on that, maybe in few, two or three months. And uh, yeah, then we'll be able to. Uh, yeah. So why did you choose uh, MMPBSA when you could have run 50 FEP? And well, <laughs> yeah, the thing is that FEP is much more expensive, first of all. And we are also working on uh, ensemble FEP and TI. So it will come up very soon. But we haven't really published anything for that. So I did not talk about that. But we are. Thank you very much. Um, oh, there's okay, one there's one more question. How diverse are the molecules that you use for validating this um, in terms of chemical similarity, hydrophobicity, charge, uh, what steps? Uh, so, yeah. So, very recently we had a publication uh, which in which we used a peptide MSC uh, uh, complex. And they had, they were quite varying, and also they had different charges. So it was charges were varying from minus three to plus one. So that was the variation of charges, and we have got very good results in that. There's a publication out for that, uh, which was published in, in the beginning of this year. You can have a look. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>